Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Now we start the lecture number 17, which is related to natural dyeing of silk. In the previous lecture, we saw the natural dyeing of cotton. Now let us get into the depth of natural dyeing of silk. Now when I was talking about cotton, I also said that it is one of the toughest to dye, whereas silk and cotton are quite different, whereas silk and wool are quite alike. Being from the amide series of chemically structured molecules, they behave in a similar manner unlike cotton which is cellulosic in nature. Natural dyeing of silk fabric, dyeing of silk fabric with different extracts of plants such as eclipta, eucalyptus, epitorium, caseifania, carthamus has been described. It is a more sustainable and eco-friendly alternative to synthetic dyes. Although silk can be easily dyed by almost all the natural colorants unlike cotton, a few examples have been taken to show the to showcase the ease of dyeing with natural dyes. Being a protein material, it has better chemical composition to allow dyes to adhere to the surface. Like cotton, even silk material has to be prepared before starting the dyeing process. Degumming of silk for removing the gummy material pre-mordenting with metal salt followed by dyeing is the sequence of reactions in a normal silk dyeing when natural dyes are used. The process of silk dyeing, accurately weighed silk fabric sample were treated with different metal mordants for pre-mordenting mostly and rarely post-mordenting with metal salts and it was carried out before dyeing or after dyeing respectively. The mordant was used usually in 2 percent weight of the fabric and was dissolved in water to make a liquor ratio 1 is to 40. The wetted sample was entered into the mordant solution and then brought to heating. Now you may have noticed that there is no tannic acid treatment or pretreatment step in silk dyeing. The temperature of the dye bath was raised to 880 degrees over a period of half an hour and left at that temperature for another 30 minutes. The mordanted material was then raised and water thoroughly it was washed with water squeezed and dried. It is rinsed with water thoroughly. Mordented silk needed to be used immediately for dyeing because some mordants are very sensitive to light. And you may recall that I had mentioned that when mordanting, mordanted samples of cotton, silk or wool are prepared, if they are not used immediately, they should be tightly packed in cellophane packs or ziplock bags and kept aside in shade because they are sensitive to light. Silk dyeing with eclipta extract, 40 gram of eclipta prostrata was weighed and heated in 600 ml of water for the efficient extraction which gives 400 ml extract after filtration. This process was repeated again and the same eclipta prostrata to get 400 ml more of extract 
to make the volume total into 800 ml. Out of the 800 ml, the choice of solvent was obviously aqueous medium as it can be seen that K by S for aqueous ex extract was 81.97 and that of ethanolic extract was lower as 61.66. Out of that 800 ml of extract, a part of it was kept for evaluation of dye content and the rest was used for the dyeing process. Washing of silk before dyeing. The Muga silk of GSM 45 fabric 60 grams was covered with solution containing 0.5 grams per liter of sodium carbonate and 2 gram per liter of non ionic detergent which is commonly called as labolene solution at 40 to 45 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. Keeping the material to ratio material to liquor ratio at 1.1 1 .1 is to 50. The scoured material was thoroughly washed with tap water and dried at room temperature. The scoured material was soaked in clean water for 30 minutes prior to dyeing or mordenting. For the evaluation of better dyeing results, two different strategies were adopted such as one step process with meta mordenting or simultaneous mordenting along with dyeing and the second method was two step method of pre mordenting followed by dyeing. Which means that first the fabric has to be scoured, degummed and with the mildest of mild non ionic detergent and then washed thoroughly dried in air at room temperature and then only one proceeds for mordenting or simultaneous mordenting depending on the strategy of dyeing that would be adapted. So, two, st uh, two different steps were actually or two different processes were devised. One is one step where the mordant and the dye is put together in the water bath in the dye bath and they were used one tub was only used one dye bath was only used for simultaneous mordenting and dyeing. In the second procedure they were done in step wise first the mordenting was done and then the dyeing was done. Pre mordenting of silk, pre mordenting was used for this study silk fabric which was already scoured was mordented with 2 percent alum and ferrous sulphate and 1 percent of copper sulphate, sulphate separately. These solutions were kept on water bath at 40 degrees for 1 hour. It was the fabric was immersed in it after 1 hour it was squeezed and dried. Similarly, silk pieces were also treated with enzyme solutions of diesterase, lipase and amylase and protease combination at the same 40 degrees for 1 hour on the water bath. So, two types of mordenting, pre mordenting was done, one with metal salt and the other with enzyme. The rest of the procedure was kind of similar between the, the amount of enzyme that was used that is diesterase, lipase, amylase, protease combination was only 0.2 gram which was dissolved in 200 ml of warm water. Keeping the silk pieces in it for 1 hour was enough for mordenting process, then it was allowed to dry. Dyeing was carried out in one step that is simultaneous method as well as two step which is step wise method doing a pre mordenting followed by dyeing. So, it was a very very well planned experiment.
dye bath solution exhaustion studies showed the results which are depicted in the graphical representation on the right hand side and the dye uptake by the use of the different enzymes diesterase, lipase, protease, amylase combination as well as biomodent pyrus is shown in this uh, diagram. In most of the cases, one step process of dyeing shows better result only in the case of diesterase. The two step method shows better dye uptake. In the case of pyrus, also, the one step dyeing shows better dyeing uptake by the silk fabric. So, what I am trying to draw your attention is that the biomodent pyrus shows very good results in the one step process, so does protease and amylase. Diesterase is a little behind, but of course, the control shows very poor dye uptake, which means that whether we are using enzyme or whether we are using biomodent which had pyrus which was derived from pyrus. And remember in the last lecture I had mentioned that pyrus had copper. So, these pyrus is basically having metal component, but in very small quantity, but yet it is much enough to take care of the modenting process. When we look at the C lab values of silk dyeing in one step, we find that it is much better the K by S value of uh, silk dyeing using eclipta and using enzyme and biomodent shows that control shows 16.77 as the K by S value, whereas all other diesterase, lipase, protease, amylase combination shows good uh, value for K by S value and they are all in above 20s. So, which means that this process, one step process with enzyme and biomodent with eclipta extract is a good possibility and should be taken forward. When we compared the results of the two step process with enzyme and biomodent with eclipta, we found that the control was showing the same 16.77 value of the K by S value, whereas the there was a kind of a lowering in the K by S value of the other enzymes and biomodent. So, what do we infer from this exercise? We infer that one step method which is the most desirable method in any commercial organization as compared to two step method is anyway giving good results should be followed and that is what we infer from this dying exercise. Then we started looking at the fastness properties because when we talk about natural dyeing, it may give very beautiful color, it may give good K by S value, but what is the situation if we look at it when we are trying to see whether or not this is really having good fastness. Would you ever buy a fabric which does not have good color fastness? No. So, the answer is that we have to focus on two things. One is dye uptake, the other is fastness property. If dye uptake is good, then dye adherence should also be good for the color fastness and that is what we infer from the fastness properties testing of the eclipta dyed silk. Now, when we look at the control, it is light brown in color when it is pre modented and the values for wash and uh, light fastnesses are in the grade of two, is, uh, 2 to 3, whereas all others are above that, which means that the best option could be 
enzyme or biomodent and of course, modent metal modent which is alum. Alum is showing the best result among all of them, but diesterase is also as competitive as alum. So, one can substitute alum also and one can use enzyme. The idea of this experimentation is mainly to show that there is a possibility because after testing, after experimentation, if the outcome of the experiment is worthy, then we can take it further. Otherwise, it is just an experiment which is just giving us some result which is of no consequence. These are the shades that were available for after dyeing the swatches with silk and using eclipta extract. Without enzyme, it looked very light in color, but with protease and amylase, diesterase, lipase, biomodent was fairly dark and in one step itself it was dark enough. So, we have compared the swatches of one step process and two step processes and we see that metal modents definitely uh, the ferrous sulphate has a darker color but that does not matter because ferrous anyway we have been seeing that in cotton also gives a darker tone to the dyed fabric. But what matters is the k by s value because that is the dye uptake and dye uptake and color fastnesses are going hand in hand. Eclipta is a good source of dye for silk. So, from this experimentation, we conclude that Eclipta shows good color adherence to silk fabric. Since the dyeing process involves a fast adsorption process and subsequently a slow diffusion process, the latter determines the rate of dyeing with Eclipta extract. And in the last few lecture, in one of those lectures, I had mentioned that the initial adsorption on whether it is cotton or silk or wool is very fast, the kinetics is very high. But after some time, when sufficient amount of dye has adsorbed into the fibers, then it becomes a slow diffusion process and but we, we have to give enough time for the dyeing, so that the total rate of dyeing can be determined. The enzymes and biomodents pyrus paschia represent good dyeing results with good fastness properties. It is a very cheap source of natural colorant and so are the uh, enzymes are not so cheap, but they are required in only 0.2 percent and therefore, their cost is not so much that we cannot afford in natural dyeing. Pyrus paschia, the biomodern source is e readily available in the forests of, uh, in fact it is a forest waste in the northeast region. These results make us understand that such textile dyeing is an eco-friendly process and offers a benign and safe textile processing method. The results of one step process are satisfactory and are industrially more viable, because in any industry they look at the economics and they see that how much of power will be consumed, how much of raw material will be consumed and how would be the total cost is calculated based on all these inputs. So, if one step is reduced, obviously the manpower is also reduced, the you know the labor is reduced and the chemicals are reduced because they are being used in optimal quantities. Then we move on to another extraction method of eucalyptus bark. And this extract of eucalyptus bark was then used for natural dyeing of silk. 
So, the we have already discussed supercritical fluid extraction of dye and at that time I did mention, but I will repeat the same story once again. Eucalyptus bark like any other bark in aqueous solution gives brown coloration and any brown coloration can be obtained from various other sources also, but we could never see because in the literature the bark was shown to have flavonoids, but the presence of flavonoids could not be checked on either TLC or any other method. So, most of the flavonoids in the bark are soluble in supercritical carbon dioxide solvent. The supercritical carbon dioxide extraction can produce a better and stable extract when it is mixed with ethyl acetate as entrainer. Supercritical carbon dioxide extraction of eucalyptus bark was done for the first time by us at pressures in the range of 300 to 500 bar and at temperatures we varied 15, 35 and 55. The solubility of the flavonoid versus the pressure at different temperatures was then evaluated by us. So, temperature versus pressure requirement for better extraction and we found that best extraction was done at 55 degrees and at you, you know the quercetin which was present, the flavonoid that was present could be extracted and three temperatures helped us to see which one is giving us the best yield. Washing and mordenting of silk. Pre-treatment of fabric after removing the impurity of silk fabric by non-ionic soap washing, then it was treated with metal ions. Because metal mordenting cannot be done on an un impure silk fabric, it will become uneven and the eventual dyeing result will also be uneven. So, we have to take utmost care to show that there is evenness in dyeing and therefore, impurities and degumming of the silk fabric is a must and scouring should be done before we proceed for mordenting. We do not have to do the tannic acid treatment, but we definitely have to do the mordenting step. Pre mordenting of silk which was already washed with non ionic soap and dried was used for metal mordenting with 1 percent of mordant solution of copper sulphate and stannic chloride and 2 percent solution of alum separately and is kept on the water bath for 50 degrees for 1 hour. This is the common mordenting step that is followed for natural dyeing of silk. It was squeezed, dried and used for further dyeing. Supercritical fluid extracted dye was diluted with methanol 1 is to 20, taken in sonicator and mordented silk fabric was dipped in it for 1 hour. The dye liquor was drained off and dyed fabric was not washed, it was only squeezed and dried under shade. The dyeing was also repeated by conventional method. Because whenever we are saying this method is better than that method, we need to make a comparison. Otherwise, who will believe us? A word of mouth does not really testify the results. So, the results are speak for themselves. So, when fastness properties of supercritical fluid extractant of eucalyptus was subjected to fastness property of the silk dyed with this extract. We saw that alum mordanted versus control. Control could give washing fastness and light fastness only in the range of 2 to 3 or 3. Whereas, when it was alum mordanted or copper sulphate mordanted or stannous chloride mordanted, it, uh, it ran up to the range of 4, which is very good which means that light wash fastness and wash fastness of these 
supercritical extracted dyed silk fabric were quite good. In fact, light fastness for copper sulphate mordanted was 5 and wash fastness was 4 is to 5, which is itself very good number. Special dyeing with eucalyptus bark extract. Now, eucalyptus bark shed periodically from the tree. It is like a forest or a you know garden waste and has been found to be a good source of natural colorant both as aqueous as well as supercritical extract. The aqueous extract yields several shades of brown whereas, the supercritical fluid extract yield bright shades of yellow and particularly canary yellow. What I am trying to draw your attention that from the same source by changing the solvent we can get two different range of color one is in the yellows and the other one is in brown. Now, you see the beauty of natural dye is if you change the solvent you get two different colors, if you change the mordants you get ample of other colors, if you use enzyme you do not get a variety of color, but you get a color which is very color fast. When you use a biomordant, you get again a variety of color. So, this is the beauty of natural dye molecules, where there is so much of diversity which can be obtained from one source. The flavonoids which get masked during aqueous extraction express more of dark brown which is very typical of any bark material. However, the supercritical fluid extractant selectively extracts only the yellow colored flavonoids at that particular critical temperature and pressure. If we alter the temperature and pressure, we are likely to get any other compound, but that also will be only pure steroid or pure terpenoid. So, similarly when we fix these parameters, we got pure flavonoids which was yellow in color. Moving on to another plant which is abundantly available in Uttarakhand, it is called Epitorium. Epitorium leaves and stem parts of plant source were crushed and dissolved in distilled water and allowed to boil in a beaker kept over water bath for a quick extraction and it required only 1.5 hours. In one and a half hours, the extract was already in the aqueous uh, solution. All the color was extracted from the plant parts that is the leaves and the stems by the end of one and a half hour. The extraction was filtered, concentrated and used for dyeing directly. The colorant showed one major peak at 436 nanometer. This dye is inexpensive and grows abundantly in the region of Uttarakhand and at that altitude it is everywhere the place. And the method of application is also very simple producing no pollutant. Mordanting and sonicator dyeing. Natural dyes require chemical in the form of metal salts to produce an affinity between the silk and the pigment or the colorant molecule and these chemicals are known as mordants. Accurately weighed textile sample was treated with 2 to 4 percent of different metal salts such as alum ferrous sulphate, copper sulphate, only pre-mordanting with metal salts was carried out before dyeing. Then subsequently after mordanting, dyeing was carried out. The mordanted fabric were dyed with dye extract keeping the m is to l ratio as 1 is to 30 in sonicator. Temperature of the dye bath was only raised up to 40 degrees which could be very close to the room temperature over half an hour and left at that temperature for another 30 minutes. 
The dyed fabric or yarn was not washed immediately. It was rinsed after 24 hours with water thoroughly squeezed and dyed. The dry dyed material was then dipped in brine for dye fixing. Now, this I have mentioned earlier also that normally the dyed solution or the dyed fabric is from the solution the dyed fabric is taken out and it is just dip dried. It is not washed after 24 hours it is washed and that is the time the dye would have by that time penetrated into the fabric well enough and then it is ready to be washed so that all the superficial dye molecules can be washed off with water using water thoroughly. Effective sonicator dyeing. Now, it is a mostly in the case of silk, even sometimes in the case of wool and cotton, but mostly in the case of silk we have used sonicator dyeing. The effect of ultrasound in dyeing mainly focuses on the utilization of ultrasonic energy for chemical activity, which arises mainly from the acoustic cavitation in liquid media. The cavitation occurring near a solid surface which generates micro jets. The micro jets effect facilitate the liquid to move with a higher velocity resulting in increased diffusion of dissolved dye inside the pores of the fabric. Localized temperature raise and swelling the effect of the fiber takes place due to the ultrasound and it may improve the diffusion of the dye into the fabric. The bubbles generated due to cavitation oscillate which is responsible for the enhanced molecular motion and stirring come mixing effect of the dissolved dyes. In the case of fabric dyeing particularly silk dyeing the effect produced due to agitation may be causing the interface of the fabric and the dye solution to get activated. Dye uptake was studied during the course of dyeing process for a total dyeing time of 3 hours with and without ultrasound because always we make a comparison without ultrasound in the conventional way how did it behave and a with ultrasound or in sonicator what was the result. About 72 percent exhaustion of dye of eupatorium can be achieved in one hour dyeing time using ultrasound while compared to only 48 percent in the absence of ultrasound in stationary condition for this natural dye and this was our observation. So, you see 72 versus 48, it is a major difference, 1 hour versus 3 hours. So, the time is reduced, the dye exhaustion is increased, is not it beneficial? So, that is the reason and in the sonicator one more addition, additional advantage is that the fabric is very gently agitated. So, there, therefore, it is a win-win situation that when we use ultrasound machine which is a sonicator, it is handling the silk which is a very delicate fabric very gently, yet the results are far better than the conventional dyeing method. When we look at the C lab value of silk with the pitorium, we find that the control shows green color, with alum it shows khaki green and has a k by s value of 41 in the control which increases to 54 and with copper sulphate it becomes dark greenish yellow and the k by s value becomes 122.9 almost 123. With stannous chloride it becomes greenish yellow and it also is fairly high 77.5. So, you see that 
the dye uptake with the help of these mordants are so much increased in the sonicator method and that is the advantage of using sonicator and using the epitorium extract. The washing fastness of properties of epitorium with silk also shows that control is of the order of 4 for washing and light is only 2 to 3 in the control. However, in alum, copper, sulphate and stannic, however, in control it is just 4 for washing and light it is 2 is to 3, whereas for alum, copper sulphate and stannous chloride it is in the range of 4 is to 5 and so is the case in rubbing and perspiration fastnesses also, which means that there is definitely an improvement in all these as compared to the control. It also indicates that the mordant makes all the difference in improving the fastness properties and in making better dye uptake. These are some of the shades that are up obtained from epitorium leaves and stem. Alum is showing a beautiful mustardish yellow, copper sulphate is showing dark mustard, sanus is also showing a kind of a mustard, epitorium leaves and stem which has a greenish tinge are very cheap sources of natural dye as I mentioned it grows everywhere and gives a shade desired shade of greenish, greenish yellow with different mordants. This makes epitorium a very good natural source which can be exploited for silk dyeing as it shows very good fastness properties. Because when we are exploring new sources of dye, we need to establish many factors. One factor is how much of this plant is available, how frequently we can harvest, what is the color content in that, how well it is suited for dyeing cotton, silk and wool and then what are the fastness properties, what is the dye uptake. If it fulfills all these characteristics then it is an ideal candidate for being a dye yielding plant source. Then moving on to another plant which is called sappan wood and we have discussed sappan wood in other contexts also earlier. In order to trap the bright magenta color of sappan wood lumen to the silk fabric, the dyeing was carried out in sonicator and aqueous and soxalate extraction failed in the case of sappan wood. This story I have mentioned twice, so I will not repeat it again. pre mordanting washed silk fabric was dipped in 2 percent of modern solution of alum or 1 percent solution of stannous chloride and ferrous sulphate separately and was kept on water bath at 50 degrees for 1 hour. It was squeezed and dried. The procedure for dyeing with sappan wood is the following. Extracted dye was kept in sonicator and mordanted silk fabric was dipped in it for 1 hour. After 1 hour, it was dried in shade. It is recommended not to squeeze the dyed fabric only to drip dye or to drain the dye liquor. So, one should only pick it up from two ends and clip it on the cloth line. Dry the material under shade by air. A similar dyeing was also done by conventional method. So, we were doing parallel experimentation one by conventional method and the other one in sonicator. Dye fixing was done with a solution containing 500 ml of water and 10 grams of sodium chloride and it was a brine solution was prepared. Dyed fabric was dipped in sodium chloride solution for an hour 
and then the fabric was washed with tap water and dried in shade. The values, the C lab values of silk dyed with wood shows the following. The control shows the K by S value as 0 0.14, whereas with alum modented, stannous chloride modented, stannic chloride modented, ferrous sulphate modented, the values for K by S were found to be 10.0, 27.88, and 19.7, which means that ferrous was not the choice of mordant, it was stannous chloride which gave the best K by S value. So, time and again I have been telling one very important fact that even the mordants have a certain amount of compatibility or suitability with natu a particular natural dye. The next step of course, it becomes the fastness properties evaluation with different mordants using sup and wood extract. So, the dyed swatches with sup and wood were then subjected to wash, light, rubbing and perspiration tests. Those tests we have already discussed, they are IS methods which are followed stringently. Alum showed a wash fastness of 4, whereas light fastness of 4 is to 5 and we saw that the control was only showing 2 is to 3 uh, in both the cases. That means, again it is proven that modenting does make all the difference and when we look at the stannous chloride values, they are among the best in the series of fastness properties which is substantiated by a better, the best K by S value also. Now, when we look at the shades from Suppen wood, we see alum, iron sulphate, stannic chloride, stannous chloride. These are all dyed with, uh, uh, with Suppen wood and these are all silk swatches. So, one can see that all these colors are quite deep in color and from the deep magenta it has taken a little reddish tinge, but nevertheless it is still very bright and very beautiful which was entrapped by the sonicator method and the conventional method also had some coloration, but not so deep. Sonicator used for dye extraction and dyeing. Stannous chloride is an important modern for silk, which in conjunction with supper wood dye gives richer shades. Since the metallic moderns, stannous chloride or alum are soluble in water and are loosely held by the silk fiber, these moderns have to bind the dye molecule very well. So, here again they act as a bridging head, they hold the dye molecule and the fabric together, the modern place, but the compatibility or the suitability among all the moderns that were tried with supper wood, stannous chloride stands out is one of the best for supper wood. So, one can see that as we go along. We also understand that just the way the enzymes had a compatibility issue with a particular dye would be best suited with one enzyme. Similarly, we will be drawing inferences even with metal mordants and we have already seen some of these cases. The dye uptake was better for sonicator method of dyeing as compared to the conventional method. Although the time taken was the same 60 minutes for both the processes, but the dye uptake improved considerably in the case of sonicator. Even sonicator dyeing for natural dyes was done for the first time in our laboratory and it was then being practiced now all over India and abroad. 
because these are all technological upgradation where we are trying to find a better way and a better way which can lead to better result. So, it is not about boasting your own research, it is about talking about the practicality, the experimentation design and the outcome of that experimentation. If it is giving favorable result, definitely it should be propagated, it should be told to people and people should practice it for their benefit. Then comes Carthamus safflower for silk dyeing. A highly purified carthamin dye is extracted from petals of safflower by treating the flower with an alkali solution and adjusting the pH to 8 to 9 by soaking 100 to 150 grams of dry flowers or frozen flowers in 500 ml of water and or for more than 1 to 2 hours or till all the dye bleaches out from the flower. This extract was yellow in color, it was squeezed and filtered. This solution was used for dyeing as it is. So, pre modenting that is covered silk, degummed silk which is washed is now dipped in modern solution which is made from 2 percent of alum or 1 percent of ferrous sulphate and copper sulphate separately and was kept on the water bath at 50 degrees centigrade for 1 hour. It was squeezed and dried as it is and then we proceeded for dyeing. Extracted dye was kept in sonicator fabric and was then dipped in it for 1 hour. The dye liquor was drained and the dyed fabric was not washed, it was squeezed and dried in shade. The washing was done after 24 hours. The dyeing was also done by conventional method. So, in silk we have mostly compared the sonicator method with conventional method and come up with a new strategy that sonicators are definitely more practical solution for the betterment of silk dyeing. The C lab values of silk swatches show that you know when you look at the control it is yellow in color, but when you see alum mordented it is golden yellow, ferrous sulphate mordented it is khaki in color, the copper sulphate is mustard in yellow. And therefore, we see that you know these carthamus flowers are also a good option for silk dyeing and the extraction process is not very difficult. When we look at the fastness properties of the fabric dyed with aqueous solution of carthamus flower, we see that although the control showed good washing fastness, alum mordated and ferrous mordented showed lower washing fastness, but better light fastnesses, but copper sulphate shows showed the best, which means that copper sulphate is best suited for carthamus flowers. You know that is how we draw inferences that which one is better for dyeing and what should be the modern that should be recommended for commercial dyeing using carthamus flowers. These are some of the shades that were obtained from carthamus as a good source of silk dyeing. Carthamus or uh, safflower was found to be particularly important as textile dyes. We have got some brilliant shades out of this. Results of dyeing with carthamus flower showed that copper sulphate mordenting gave best result good shade of color with optimum concentration of just 1 percent and the shade obtained was bright yellow. Bright colors were also obtained with alum and ferrous sulphate. Thus, the safflower dye seems to be potentially a commercially viable natural dye which should be exploited 
by the textile industry as a safe alternative for azoic dye direct yellow 1 and direct yellow 2 24. Because azo dyes have been completely banned, so it is now our responsibility to take this, uh, give an alternative from the natural dye series. Silk dyeing with natural dyes then goes on that to say that dyeing silk with natural dyes can be rewarding and environmentally friendly process. Natural dyes are derived from plants, insects and minerals and they offer a wide range of colors. As silk is a good receptor of natural colorants, only mordanting, mostly pre-mordanting, sometimes simultaneous mordanting and rarely post-mordanting is required during the dyeing process. Very good color depth and fastness properties are obtained. Hence, natural dyeing of silk is considered relatively more facile than cotton. Now, what I am trying to draw your attention and what you should take away from this lecture is that there are challenges with silk dyeing, but the challenges are lesser as compared to cotton. The number of steps of silk dyeing are lesser as compared to cotton, but each of them are actually the fabric are structurally very different. So, the treatise of the dyeing process also has to be slightly different. Although we are using natural dye extract which is freshly extracted from the plant, mainly we have explored plants which are around us which are abundantly available so that we can vouch for their availability and the extraction processes have been developed in a manner which can be practiced by others also. This particular process of extraction through sonicator in the case of sapan wood came out very accidentally. Nevertheless, it was a breakthrough because that magenta color was restored in the fabric in, in, and it looked like more on the reddish side rather than the pinkish side. But nevertheless, the, at least it did not turn into the ugly brown which was happening in the conventional extraction process. Similarly, epitorium was one other uh, you know cheaply available material which could be exploited and which was not exploited so far in a big way because people were not aware of the high dye content that the stems and the leaves had. So, this exploration not only helped us to research with unknown plants, but we because earlier there were only a handful of plants which were being repeatedly used. People were only using madder, catechu, indigo, pomegranate and a few more. But when we started exploring the dye yielding plants in each of the states of India, we found that there is a huge biodiversity which can be explored. And it was our privilege to uh, get pro projects from government funding agencies which helped us to do this research in such a big manner and in such efficient manner. Only then we could come up with these processes these compatibility tests, which one is better, whether conventional method of dyeing is better than sonicator method, whether using an enzyme is better than using uh, metal mordants, whether metal mordants should be preferred over bio mordants. All this we could not have been able to come to a conclusion unless and until we had done such concerted studies with the uh, you know with all these natural dies. Having understood the uh, you know the integrities and the minute uh, dealings of cotton dyeing, we today saw the silk dyeing method. So, silk has a different kind of treatise, the degumming has to be done followed by 
scouring which can remove all the oils and waxes and everything. After that, it is then ready for mordanting. Mordanting also can be done with enzymes, biomoderns or metal moderns. So, but we did not need any tannic acid treatment because the surface of silk fabric is already surface activated and therefore, it did not require any special treatment for activation. And that is the reason why we got such good dye yield in terms of dye uptake, in terms of color depth and in terms of fastness properties. Quite similar results we will see in the next lecture which is re related to natural dyeing of wool, but nevertheless silk is silk and wool is wool. So, it has to be treated differently although they both belong to the proteinaceous uh, category of fabric, but their treatise is also slightly different. Moving on. There are challenges faced during natural dyeing of silk. Everything is not so rosy and so easy. Natural dyeing of silk while is very rewarding and environmentally friendly comes with its own set of challenges. Here are some of the common challenges faced in the natural dyeing process of dyeing process of silk. Color consistency. Achieving color consistent color can be challenging with natural dyes due to variation in plant material, water quality, pH levels and even seasonal changes. Light fastness and wash fastness. Natural dyes tend to have lower light fastness and wash fastnesses compared to synthetic dyes. Ensuring the longevity of the color on silk requires proper mordanting and post treatment processes which can restore the color for longer periods of time. Mordanting. Silk requires specific mordants to fix natural dyes effectively. Achieving the right balance of mordants without damaging the delicate silk fibers and it can be very tricky. So, one has to be very careful while choosing the mordant while suggesting the mordant and we also saw in this course of uh, lecture that there is a specific selectivity of one mordant over the other to get the best k by s value. Some other challenges during the natural dyeing of silk are fiber sensitivity. Silk is a delicate fiber that can be easily damaged by harsh chemicals and excessive heat. Care must be taken to choose gentle moderns and dyeing methods to preserve the integrity of the silk. Availability and scouring. Scouring high quality natural dyes can be challenging, especially if you are looking for specific colors. Even sourcing natural dyes could be very challenging because when we want high purity dyes, then we have to go in for purification of the dye extract. Seasonal variation, geographical limitation can affect dye availability. Color range, the color range achievable with natural dyes is more limited compared to synthetic dyes. While many beautiful hues can be obtained achieving certain bright or vivid colors, it may be sometimes challenging, but there are we have shown that very bright colors can be obtained through natural dye, especially in the case of Eupatorium, in the case of safflower, in the case of wood. Time and skill intensive. Natural dyeing is often a labor intensive process that requires patience, skill and knowledge of dye plants, moderns and techniques. It may take multiple steps and several days to achieve the desired results. So, it is not, it is a matter of great deal of practice which then allows the, us to 
tell with lot of confidence that this will work and this will not work. Conventional is not as good as uh, sonicator. Metal mordants are less effective than bio mordants or enzyme and all this put together, this knowledge, this experience makes us understand that definitely there are challenges with natural dyeing of silk, but it, they are not so stiff that they cannot be overcome. We have come overcome many challenges like sourcing. We have now explored so many flora around us in different states and at different altitude we have found that there are different dye yielding plants which were remaining unexplored, which are in abundance, which can be trapped as natural dye uh, you know source. So, we have tried to do our best to show that silk dyeing can be made attractive and this can be actually used in commercial purposes. Creation of beautiful and sustainable silk dyed fabric, environmental factors, natural dyeing relies on the use of plant materials which are subject to environmental fluctuations such as climate change, seasonal variation and habitat loss. Ensuring sustainable sourcing practices is essential for long term viability of natural dyeing. Cost. While natural dyes themselves are often inexpensive or even free if you know they are collected from the forests and other places, the cost of modern equipment and labor can add up. Additionally, achieving consistent results may require experimentation and additional resource. Despite these challenges, Many artisans and textile enthusiasts find the process of natural dyeing deeply rewarding both aesthetically and environmentally. With practice, experimentation and attention to details, it is possible to overcome these challenges and create beautiful sustainable dyed silk textile. So, there is a lot of scope when we are trying to make sustainable silk dyed fabric or garment, there is an enormous amount of scope which can be possible with natural dyeing. Although there are so many factors which need to be considered that whether this plant will be available later on, whether it is seasonal, whether it will be available in abundance because remember that the colorant content in plant of dye yielding plants is only 2 to 10 percent. In fact, in most of them it is only 2 to 5 percent which I have mentioned in our earlier lecture. So, that means that you have to have bulk of the plant part to get just 2 percent of the dye, but that 2 percent of dye is eco friendly. When we extract the biotic material that is left can be recycled, can be composted, the dye bath solution can be used for irrigation and it becomes a holistic cycle where we try to use every part of that uh, system. The biotic material is composted and is made into a fertilizer. The dye bath where the dye is remaining little bit is used for irrigation which still has plant nutrients which can be used and therefore, every part of that whole cycle is usable and recyclable. So, we can conclude that natural dyeing of silk is a very interesting process which requires very meticulously planned, standardized and optimized processes and these processes need to be you know documented carefully. And if a standardized process is developed, if the dye right from dye extraction to dye 
usage, it can give good results and consistent result from batch to batch. So, that myth that there is no batch to batch matching possible and every time the natural dye gives a different shade is not true. If the process is done by a standardized method, it will always give the results which are very, very well established and these will be repeatable, reproducible. So, with this we have come to an end of this lecture. Thank you.